Councillor Crandon, will you do the invocation? Yes, sir. The life you've given all of us, Father, uh, no buddy of mine, you say you control our next breath, and that's, that's a fact, so I want to be sure to always just thank you. Thank you for this life you've given us, Father, and just uh, all the blessings you give us and help us go through this meeting. We're all here for our Cherokee people, Father. And um, we sometimes disagree, sometimes agree. But uh, if we focus on that here for the Cherokee people, uh, good outcomes will come as long as you're, you're leading our hearts and our minds and our mouth. So we love you and I want to thank you most of all for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shelly, will you do the roll call, please? Yes, sir. Keith Austin. Joshua Sam. Here. Danny Callison. Here. Julia Coates. Sean Crittenden. Here. Joe Deere. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Rex Jordan. Here. Johnny Kidwell. Here. Daryl Legg. Here. Wes Nofire. Here. Dora Petskowski. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Movina Shot Pouch. Here. E.O. Smith. Here. Condessa Cheehy. Victoria Vasquez. We have a quorum. Thank you, Shelley. I am here, Shelley. Shelly, this is Keith. I am here. <laughs> Has everyone had a chance to look over the minutes? All right. I entertain a motion for approval for the January 27th regular session and the PAC. All right. A second? All right. First and a second. All in approval? Aye. Right. Thank you. All right. We'll go into reports. Uh, with CMB, do we have Chuck Garrett on? Good morning, all. This is Amber Edwards. He's en route uh, back to his office, and so he'll be here in just a few moments. Okay, we can uh, just move ahead and come back to him when he gets in there. Uh, Denise Taylor, Treasurer. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? You've got my report, but there are a few things that I wanted to be sure and bring up. The um, Congress did finally pass the omnibus, and there's two things that I want to say about that. One is to thank you and express my appreciation to this council for the way we have always been able to pass our budget for a full year and before our new year starts in October. That gives stability to Cherokee Nation. It ensures that our services are going to go on. We've got the federal government passing three months extension, literally days long extensions, and that doesn't really allow you to dig in and start administering your programs as if you knew that you had a full 12 months of funding. So I just want you to know how much I appreciate uh, you all doing that. Another thing that I was pretty excited about was, if you haven't read it, there, there's actually $62 million in that specifically for uh, the McGirt ruling. And so we're actually getting some funding. They haven't determined how that's going to be distributed yet, but they actually realized that they gave us all this responsibility without the funds to carry out our responsibilities. So I'm excited about that. Um, financial resources is required by law to have our audit done by the end of March. And we've been working on that for the last six to eight weeks. And it will be done on time. And I'll be bringing you guys copies of that as soon as we have all the printing done and everything. Um, in our meeting with the auditors last week, one of the things that they brought up when the pandemic started and everybody was scrambling to figure out how we were going to do the new normal, one of the decisions that was made in financial resources by our controller, Jamie Cole, and at that time, Treasurer Trey Lena Scott, was that payroll was going to be sent home. They, they have worked from home for the last two years because they realized that if our Cherokee, 
workforce was not being paid, our, our um, services would stop, then we're not taking care of our citizens. It's just a uh, domino effect from there. And so that decision was made to try and protect them any way that we could. And we have not missed a payroll since that happened. And our auditors told us last week, we are the only auditee they've had in two years that has not missed some sort of paycheck or a payment due to COVID going through their payroll department. So you guys should be proud of that. Um, I'm sure you've all read through the budget modifications. We're bringing the motor, motor vehicle tax forward. And when you read the programs that we support with that tax, it just ought to make you proud. There are some really good things in there, and I'm so proud to be part of Cherokee Nation and the way we use our money, and it goes back to the citizens. So that's all my extra stuff. Does anybody have any questions for me? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Speaker. I can't help but give the kid a hard time. And there you go. Okay. Um, no, he does oh. a great job. Um, gosh, that's impressive uh, that we're the only ones. I mean, that is very impressive. And hats mm -hmm. off to, to your department and your predecessors. And also, I think we've already discussed it. We might not have. I don't know. But... You guys got an award for uh, your reporting. Tell us really, really quickly about that, and congratulations. That's a big well, deal. Well, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, 20 years running that we have gotten that particular award. But another thing uh, came up. I was recently involved in a tribal finance class through Oklahoma State University. We have what is called, the we refer to it as the PAFR, it's the Popular Annual Financial Report, and it is a, a report for ordinary people that aren't in financial markets to show how we're using our funding and um, that sort of thing, but it's just for a layman to read, somebody who's not familiar with financial statements. And in this class, they brought up that this was a neat thing to do and that there was one tribe in Oklahoma that actually did one. A lot of times cities will do them, sometimes counties. And we were, at, that, at the time they did put the class together, the only tribe in Oklahoma doing it. And they actually used our 2018 PAFR for, for demonstration in this class. So that was another proud moment for Cherokee Nation. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, again, thank you for all that you do, and you guys have represented as well, and that's a great testament what the Cherokee Nation thinks about their people when we're the only ones that don't miss paying them a paycheck. That's awesome. Thank you, Chair. All right. Any other questions for Treasurer Taylor? All right. I think that's okay. Thank you, everything. guys. Thank you. All right, looks like Chuck Garrett is on the line. Uh, Chuck, we'll go to your report now. All right. Good morning, Council. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here uh, reporting on January's financial uh, performance for uh, your businesses. Uh, I believe you have uh, received my report, but just a couple of highlights uh, for you. Uh, both of our business lines continue to perform uh, extremely strong here uh, in FY22. This is our fourth completed month that I'm reporting on, and uh, not only have we exceeded our budgets and targets uh, each year, uh, cumulatively we are off to uh, uh, an incredibly strong start. We see uh, our gaming business continuing to pick up momentum. Uh, and hopefully the workforce will uh, continue to stabilize. Uh, it's been quite the challenge, as mo most of you know, when you are out in the community trying to get service, uh, uh, it has been extremely difficult. Uh, we're being aggressive on our recruiting. Of course, we have a, a very attractive benefits package, which uh, we think in the long run will distinguish us from our competitors, but it has been a, an very, very difficult operating environment. Uh, notwithstanding that, our guys have done a really terrific job uh, up and down. With respect to our federal contracting business, uh, we are 
in pursuit of some substantial contracting opportunities as we normally are, but uh, I think this is uh, going to, we're going to find ourselves um, in just kind of an unprecedented uh, uh, realm here uh, very shortly. Uh, for this period of time, uh, the contracting pace and the uh, awards that we've received have, uh, you know, have uh, normally, uh, you would see something like this towards the fourth quarter uh, when, when most of the federal contracting uh, opportunities are actually let. But um, we're, we're way ahead of pace and excited to take advantage of that. Just a couple of uh, non-financial uh, notes. Um, earlier this month, CMB uh, participated in the Junior Achievement uh, uh, inspire event which is uh, designed to uh, to present opportunities and career options for our youth and several of our CMB employees participated in that uh, event and it's always a, uh, a big hit and an important introduction to business uh, for our youth also our very talented uh, cultural tourism team will open the uh, it Takes a Nation, Sequoia Schools and the Roots of Excellence exhibit on March 15th at the John Ross Museum in Tahlequah. I encourage you all to keep an eye out and hopefully you'll be able to drop by at some point. Also and finally, uh, live racing returns to Will Rogers Downs this month uh, for our 13th consecutive year. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, hosting the spring meet and it's always a good time and uh, well attended and uh, important for the horse industry here in Oklahoma. So we're excited about that and be happy to uh, address any questions you might have. Any questions for Mr. Garrett? Sean? Hi, Mr. Garrett. How are you? I'm, I'm well. Thank you, Counselor. Um, just a brief Arkansas update, if you can. Certainly. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, we are uh, continuing to, to move forward on our design and uh, engineering efforts for the facility. Uh, it's, of course, uh, a, a political uh, uh, issue for some. Uh, we have a, a, some parties that are sponsoring an uh, initiative petition which is designed to amend the Constitution of Arkansas to remove the uh, license from Pope County. As you will recall, the Constitution had been amended to provide for four licenses, uh, one of them in Russellville or Pope County. And so the, the effort to overturn that amendment, uh, I frankly, uh, don't think has the political momentum it would need uh, to collect the number of signatures that are required and then the voters of o Arkansas would be voting to remove one of four licenses. Obviously that takes a lot of tax revenue out of the pockets of Arkansans. Uh, it is very, very impactful to their tourism industry and candidly would be a, a major s step backward for, for the state. So uh, what we're seeing are, you know, some interesting alliances forming uh, with uh, some gaming interest and also uh, the church, uh, various churches in Pope County and, and elsewhere uh, aligning to, to try and run this petition. Uh, the last thing I would mention, Counselor, is we are uh, uh, expecting some uh, judicial uh, decisions this later in this week. Uh, it's the last of the uh, significant pieces of litigation. The issue at hand is whether or not uh, Cherokee Nation businesses and C&E have the required history and, and experience uh, gaming. I think with running 10, 10 uh, uh, casinos uh, across, the, uh, across the state, 
uh, frankly, we have more experience than anybody uh, that is uh, uh, either currently uh, running casinos in Arkansas or even any of the proposed uh, operators. So we're feeling really good about where we're at, uh, excited to uh, make some headway on the design, working through the Planning Commission uh, and the other development uh, aspects of a, of a significant development like that. So. Uh, exciting times, and, and uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you, Mr. Garrett, and appreciate what you do. And uh, I can't think of anyone else uh, besides you and your staff to, to get us through, through the Arkansas uh, situation and look forward to seeing what you guys do. Thank you. I, I appreciate that comment, and we've got a great team. It's, uh, uh, and it takes, it, takes a, it takes a village. <laughs> It's a lot of a lot of work, so thanks for that. All right, any other questions? Oh, Speaker Shambo? Real quick, just a quick comment. Um, gosh, a little disappointed in, in that uh, litigation stuff that's going on. I, I really didn't see it coming from that direction, but um, I would like to say thank you, too, for uh, everything you've done in Arkansas and your due diligence in, in defending the Cherokee Nation and our interests. It's been a long road. Uh, hopefully the light is at the end of the tunnel, but um, hey, you guys have fought tooth and nail for this, and and I have no doubts that uh, you know you'll be successful. I just want to say thank you for all you've done. Thank, thanks for that, Speaker. Any other questions, comments? All right, doesn't look like any. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. All right, my pleasure. Thank you all. Have a good day. All right, we'll move on over with Career Services and Employment with Diana Kelly. St. Patrick's Day or week, because St. Patrick's Day is coming up and everybody wears green that week so they don't get pinched. But, uh, Anyway, uh, we have been extremely busy. Uh, we were very blessed in getting the property at the fairgrounds, and we're going to be meeting this week and trying to get that launched. And uh, we're still working on identifying Indian-owned businesses in our tarot operation. Uh, Tammy and Christine and uh, the staff up there are working on that. Uh, Brad Sams had been working on it, and he turned it over to them. And so we will have a good report on the Indian-owned businesses that we've identified in the Cherokee Reservation pretty soon, and we'll be able to tell you how many of them decided to get tarot certified as a result of it. Uh, some of them are looking at uh, uh, small business loans. Some of them are looking at getting uh, federal recognition so that they can expand their businesses. So we're uh, looking forward to getting that report out to you. Uh, we'll be rolling out our youth programs. Probably next month I'll give you a, a more detailed report on our youth career exploration program that we're going to start this year uh, for 14 and 15 year olds. We're only going to accept 10 in uh, Cherokee County and 10 and prior and that will launch it and then we may expand it. We may go down to Salisaw with that program as well. And then we've got our uh, youth leadership program. It's going to be in two different locations this year. Uh, George is expanding that and we'll have one in prior and one in Tahlequah. Uh, we've got our uh, recruitment fairs that we're getting ready to schedule. We have a lot of businesses. Uh, I'm glad Chuck talked to you a little bit about, you know, the fact that they have a lot of open positions. We have a lot here at the Cherokee Nation, and that is the norm everywhere. Everywhere, everybody is recruiting. And with the pandemic, we're hoping that people will start uh, coming back to work and wanting jobs. So we're uh, being asked by a lot of businesses if we could do a diverse job recruitment fair. So we're hoping to do that here in the next uh, couple of months, give us time to expand and uh, do recruitment. Uh, I have a lot of confidence and a lot of faith in my uh, counselors. They know the grassroots people and they know how to get the people in. And uh, I expect uh, some good attendance at all those fairs. Uh, we were in Salisaw this past uh, week with uh, Deputy Chief Warner 
Councilman Smith and Councilman Legg, we were at an economic development meeting, and uh, while we were there, they talked a little bit about the call center. Uh, I have a flyer in my report that will tell you a little bit about it. They're going to start out at $11 per hour for the people that are coming in for training. After they've trained them, then they will go up to $12 to $13 an hour. And the call center is at the old stage store, which was in the old Walmart shopping center. And uh, they are uh, recruiting right now, but they are uh, launching their opening, their soft opening pretty soon. They haven't announced the ribbon cutting. Uh, they are also still looking at Muskogee. And uh, we're still working with Mid-America Industrial Park for what they call Ocean Project Ocean. And uh, Chuck and Andy McMillan are involved with that. And uh, Chief has been involved as well. Uh, so we're hoping that they'll make some sort of announcement uh, for that, which will be in addition to the electric uh, canoe electric car company that's up there. So we've got a lot on our plate, a uh, lot of stuff getting ready to happen as a result of the um, youth programs, the summer programs, and uh, I'm going to be back here this afternoon, and I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what we're doing as far as expanding our service delivery. So do you all have any questions? Any questions, comments? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we got Anna Knight with the Commerce Department coming up next. Hello again. Um, you do have a copy of my report. I'll just remind everyone that we're in the middle of. Um, volunteer income tax season. So if you have constituents that need their um, income tax prepared, have them make sure to reach out to us. And um, we go to various communities and we can even help with online. So other than that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions or comments for Anna? Speaker? Real quick, um, didn't ask you earlier. What percentage of the money that we, that you get is from grants? Um, the Cherokee Nation's budget is about 80% grant funded. So out of the entire Cherokee Nation wow. budget, about 80% of that is grants. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. any, any, any more questions, comments? All right. Looks like you're good to go. Thank, Thank you so much, you. Anna. All right, we'll move over. Um, has everyone had a chance to look over their consent items? Any questions or comments to be made on it? Looks like we're good, Jody. I have, er one, change to have one change to make on uh, ARPA funding for Councilman Deer. Uh, the, there was a, a new LEAF project for 200000 and that needs to be reduced to 100000 And <clears throat> along those same lines on the ARPA funding, I had was doing the reporting on it basically like, like the roads programs, but there's so many additional approval steps and stuff going through the treasurer, the chief on a lot of them and everything that uh, they were hoping to uh, just do a reporting at the, uh, at the ENF meeting rather than the mailing two weeks prior that, cause it's, it's kind of a change process by the time it, you know, a lot of changes in those two weeks on that ARPA funding, uh, potentially with those extra steps. So they're just going to start reporting uh, to you on ENF rather than having to end the mailing. So if that's okay with everybody. All right, Sean. Joe, are you talking about the, the money your, we got for our roads? Your, your million dollar ARPA okay. funds. And uh, so. We're still going to go through. You'll still tax. see it, but they're they're just going to hand out the report the day the day of E and F. Okay, so everything's the same. With everything's going to be the same. There's just so many extra steps, approval steps that they're having to do uh, on those funds that uh, they'll be more up to date when they report it to you on E and F rather than me doing it two weeks in advance to go out and book and everything. So, well, thank you, Joe. Anything else for Jody? Looks like we're good, Jody. Thank All you. Right. All right, we're moving to old business. We have none pending, new business. Um, Councilor Leg, can you get that first one for us? Act amending legislative act 
43.1 authorizing comprehensive catch capital budget for fiscal year 22, mod one, and declaring an emergency. And I'll put that before the motion. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All, all in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Any uh, opposition? All right, that motion passes. Uh, Councilor Crittenden, can you grab the second one for us? Yes, I'm act amending Legislative Act 44 that's 21, authorizing the comprehensive operation <coughs> budget for fiscal year 2022, Mod 5, and declaring an emergency. Put that in the form of a motion. There is a substitute. All right. I hope we have a substitute. substitute 5A. Yep. That was attached. That was handed out today. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. We got a, a motion for the modification 5A right. and, second. and a second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Signify by saying. Just oh, one quick question. I, I got right. the substitution. <clears throat> I just got the substitution, and I looked through it. I didn't. I didn't see any changes. Did anybody else see any major changes? It was just the dollar amount, right, Jody? There's uh, two two new budgets. Uh, uh, one is the $125,000 increase in the charitable contributions, uh, and then uh, the other budget is a reduction in the uh, cash match for grants to provide the funding for that contribution. Okay, perfect. That's all I was going to clarify. Okay. Any, Any other chair? questions? <coughs> all right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. All right, do we have any announcements? Mr. Chair? Yes, Mike. Well, let's uh, start health committee at 1245 instead 1240. of 1230. Okay. Thank you. All right, no other announcements. Uh, I'll, make a, I'll take a motion for to adjourn. Motion. All right, motion second. All opposed? They're all in favor? All right.